And so I would, I'm, I'm just going to kind of jump into how to make it worth it. I think the biggest thing is that you have to be willing to do something. Yes. And I, I think that if people can sit and think about what is it that they're willing to do, these billionaires are being made because they were willing to take a step out and to figure out what kind of business would be successful and it's taken off. These millionaires are being formed because people were willing to put money aside mm-hmm. for their retirement. And I would just encourage you to think about what are you willing to do in order to change your financial situation forever for the better. How about you? What do you think is going to make it worth it? Welcome. This is For Better and Worth. The podcast where we don't believe you have to sacrifice your relationship while you grow and build your net worth. We are your hosts. I'm Chris. And I'm Erica Young. And we're so glad you're joining us today. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. How are you? I'm doing great this morning. How are you? I'm doing good. We don't usually record in the morning, but we're here. And it hey. feels kind of good, actually. I feel fresh and energized and ready to roll. I feel already tired. And I ain't going to even trip <laughs> with you. <laughs> but anywho, I'm, I'm happy to be here, babe. Happy to be here. <laughs> here we are, the yin of yang of podcasting. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's what we talked about, right? Yeah. You know, one one is up, one is down. No, I'm not that sleepy, but I just think, you know, I think yeah. it's my energy level has been interesting lately, so. And I told you guys we'd be back, and here we are. Yes, so video rolling. So what are we talking about today, babe? You know, we talk a lot about relationships and money, but, you know, we're going to talk about those same things. But we were just, you know, thinking about, like people talk about how much you need for retirement and, you know, you got to get to a million bucks and a million dollars. That's a lot of money. But when you think about the grand scheme of how the economy is rolling and how you see people becoming billionaires, will a million dollars be enough in retirement? And I know somebody is out there saying like, yes, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I'm sure it will be for, for some people. And I'm sure there's some people where a million dollars depend upon the lifestyle that they want to live is not going to be enough. And where they live is a factor. And when they decide, there's a lot of factors that go into making up is a million dollars enough. And the reason why this became important is because I actually saw a post about the fact that half a million Americans now have reached a million dollars in retirement assets. Wait, wait, you said half a million? Half a million. Like 500,000? Like 500,000 Americans have $1 million in retirement assets. And it's like, that's a milestone we've never reached. So so this is the first time. I think time. that's crazy, though. Yeah, why, crazy. why is it crazy, babe? There are 330 million people exactly. in the United States. And I did the math because I like math. And And 500,000 people have reached a million dollars. That is less than one and a half percent. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Less than 0.15 percent. It's not even one percent of Americans. It is 0.15 percent of Americans actually have a million dollars. Well, I've got to say this right now before we go any further. Wherever you're at, keep pressing. Sure. Because what I don't want people to do is be discouraged by looking at where you're at and saying, oh, I'll never get to a million. All things are possible. Yes. And the reason why this article piqued my interest is because it's the first time that we've reached this level. So what is essentially saying... that's a positive. Yeah. What it's essentially saying is that more people are accumulating retirement assets Mm -hmm. and and a million dollars is much more within our reach than it ever has been before. So millionaires are being made at a faster rate now than ever before in history. You know, I didn't share this story with you, but I guess it's an opportune time to share it. I was talking to my brother and he was telling me about one of my nieces that had moved to another state and was starting a business. And she was telling him that, you know, the the prospects that this business present, she thinks she could be 
at her first million in like a year or two. And I was like, wow. And she's like, you know, in her, you know, early 30s. And I was like, man, I got really excited and encouraged just thinking about the possibility of here it is, my niece, early 30s. And she's starting a business and she's already projecting to be able to hit a million dollars. Her first, she said her first come million. Come on now. That means that she was like, she knows she's going to have more. Let's go. I was like, come on now. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to get that money. So, yes. But that's encouraging. And that's why I said I have to say right now. Because we want people to be encouraged and know that the plan works. You know, we see these things where school teachers saved and they retire and they've got million, $2 million. And we know that, unfortunately, school teachers, they're not the best paid individuals. Even though, I mean, depending upon the school district, they can get, you know, close to six figures. But they can save and earn and save that kind of money, then you can too. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And I think if people will just be clear about what your need is, just find your own target. Because I think a lot of, you know, it's a million dollars is a nice round number and it sounds great and it is an awesome goal. But I think the bigger point is to figure out what you need because a million dollars in where we live versus where we used to live is not the same. Oh, yeah, man. You know. um, Just in housing. Right. Housing, it's a huge difference between, you know, buying a house here versus a house there. Right. It's like, Jesus, man, house open. They're getting close to a million dollars in a house. Yes. Just, you know, and and I think a lot of times it's it's where you live, it's what age you decide to retire, the kind of lifestyle you want to live. So many factors go into a retirement outlook. And so we want you to be encouraged, but we also want you to be real. Be real with yourself. And this is why, you know, I admire people. I was never this person and I don't think I'll ever be. Honestly, but I admire people. So you being real right now. I am. I admire people who go overseas and decide to live because it's less expensive and all of that. I don't think that I want to be so far from family and friends and all of that. It's not something that I aspire to. I just kind of want to visit those places and come back. But a lot of folks find that that is so much more achievable to go live somewhere else that is less expensive and you have a higher quality of life. And that's, that's an option. There are some people who decide to make the mission field, their retirement. There Mm -hmm. are some people who decide that they want to live with their kids. Some people who decide that, you know, they want to be, you know, whatever your retirement looks like. Right. But I think you actually have to have a vision. Oh no. As you're talking, this, this is prompting so many thoughts that I have. And, you know, we're talking about, one, putting yourself in a position to save and have enough money in retirement that you can live the way you want to live. Mm-hmm. And so as I think about that, I also started thinking about, well, man, when when do I retire? Mm-hmm. Because we focus so much on the future that sometimes we forget about the now. Mm-hmm. And while I think people have to be plugged in and diligent and do all the things to accomplish the goals today to get you to tomorrow, you still have to be thinking about, you know, how do you want to live today? Do you have to make sacrifices? And will those sacrifices help get you where you want to go? But I also started thinking about, I was telling you about this article I had read and they were talking about life expectancy Mm -hmm. and things like that. And they were saying that I I forget which country it was, but there was like a a 66 and a half year life expectancy. And people, if you retire, retire at 65, they're like, you got like a year and a half. You got 18 months. I was like, man, that is crazy when you think about that. Mm -hmm. And we know the life expectancy. I think you shared this. Uh, earlier today, we were talking, it's 77. Mm-hmm. 77 the, and a half in the U.S. In the U.S. So it's like, okay, the 77 and a half, the average life expectancy. But it's like, I just, I don't know. I think life has to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And that's why we talk about, pro, you know, progress over perfection. Like, you got to enjoy yourself along the way, but you still have to have a committed plan that you're working. Mm-hmm. Because... I don't know. I guess the older I get, the more I realize life is short. Yeah. It's fleeting. And 
while you have to enjoy yourself and plan, you still got to think about these things in totality. Like, look at the big picture. Enjoy a little bit now, but make sure you're working that plan so that you can enjoy even more a little bit later. So what I hear you saying is people need balance, right? Abs- that's a perfect way to put so, it. So here is my recommendation on this is right now, based on the lifestyle that you're currently living. She got all serious. And listen, because like, this is like, what I do. This is what I do. Like, okay. Well, <laughs> she had the, she was like, well. I, but this is, you know, I, I, I know. I, I appreciate, excited. I appreciate that. Listen, you, I know. am the numbers gal. I am the yes. one who tr- helps people figure out what that plan looks like. Yes. And so I think you start with where you are right now. Yep. I think you start with, how are you living today? Not not that because here's the thing. Right now we live in a a family home. Likely we will live in a family home for the rest of our lives, and be at this house or another house. Yeah. But we will not have a mortgage. So I want to be able to maintain a residence and not a tiny little house. Okay, not a tiny house, not a mobile home, <laughs> and. All of that is not in our plan. That's not in our plan. I'm going to need some yard, a backyard, all of that. Anyway. No tiny tiny home living No, here. that ain't for us, period. So I, I want to be able to have somebody come to my house and have a bedroom of their own and a bathroom of their own. Right. But so, that's, that's, that's how we, that's the decision that we're making yeah. because we're planning for the next phase with kids yeah. and families and grandkids that's what at we some want. point. That's what we want. Yep. And so so when I look at our today lifestyle without debt, like we don't have a mortgage, we don't have any debt, when we fast forward to that point, then what does our today amount yes. that we need look like? And then ensure that it can last to that 77 and a half at minimum, right? Right, because I'm believing for 92. Sure. And so we need to make sure that our nest egg, our retirement assets, what we have like in in dollars, not in just cars and, you know, physical assets, right. that those dollars can outlast our life the expectancy. The years, yes. And the best way to look at that is to say, let's just say, I'm just going to throw a number out there. Let's just say it's five grand per month. That's probably low, but, you know, let's just say five grand per month. With you no wanna, debt, with no debt, and you yeah. know, just living expenses. I mean, somebody could definitely live. Off sure. Of so, so that's. I mean, that's sixty grand a, a year. That's not a lot of money, right? But when you are retired, you want to live on the interest of the money you have. Yes. And if you have a million dollars, at six percent taking it out, that's sixty grand per year. So when we're looking at the math, it's actually easy enough if you round it. But I don't think people do that kind of planning. Yes. And then if you know that that's your number, the other thing you have to do is just see what is it going to take? How much per month do you have to save to get there? And how long is it going to take you? And It's going to be a little more than the 6% because you got to account for taxes and things like that. Well, but whatever the case. I mean, yeah. for round numbers sake, that's, that's what you want to look at. And then... You want to come back and say, okay, what do I need? How much per month do I need to get there mm-hmm. in this time frame? And can I still live the life that you're talking about? Can I still once a year go on a nice vacation? You you threw me for a loop the other the other day when Uh-oh. you said Uh-oh. you said um, <laughs> I know what you next say. year maybe we don't go on a vacation so we can reach some of these goals. I was like, I don't know who you think you're talking to. <laughs> But we're going on a vacation. Look, look, I was focused. No, 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 no. You were up in the clouds in La La Land not being real. I was like, there ain't no way that I'm going to. Now, at this point in my life. see, hold on. Hold on. You need somebody like me. See, this is how we work together. No. I'm the visionary. Oh, gosh. I cast and forecast the vision. You weren't based your vision (laughs) in reality. Because let's be clear. In six months from now, you want to go somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I wasn't being. I'm sure I wasn't being realistic in that moment because I know me, and I know I'm already thinking about the next vacation. Exactly. So. so, but but what we were talking about, we have some big goals for next year, right? And that I understand the intensity around the big goals and why that's so important. See, but what I'm not gonna do. See, what is I was not going to vacation. What so I was we can demonstrating. What I was demonstrating in that moment. Is my willingness to sacrifice. See, but that's the thing. Hold on. Hold on. Because I think 
sometimes we have to make temporary sacrifice sure. for bigger gains. Absolutely. And that's where I want people to say, like, like, do exactly what you said. Write the plan out. Know what the numbers are. So you can, when you have a plan and you don't have the numbers, you don't have a plan. Mm-hmm. And so make sure your plan has the numbers. You're clear. This is the end result that I'm looking for. And this is how I get there. But sometimes in the course of executing that plan, you're going to have to make some tif- some difficult decisions. Maybe you say, I want to expedite this process and I'm going to sacrifice this area or I'm going to sacrifice that area for a season to expedite the plan. And I think I was looking at something like the finish line is like so close I was like, you know what? I might be willing to sacrifice a vacation because I'm not only going to hit the finish line, but I'll blow through it so much quicker. So that's really where I was going with that. And so, sometimes you got to sometimes you got to be willing to do that. Right. I I and where I differ is that I'm not willing. <laughs> <laughs> You almost made me let's, my coffee. Let's be honest. Um, I'll be very honest. So, like, 10 years ago. <laughs> you said, there, what are we not going to do? 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I might have been willing. And I think it, it comes, so I'll be honest. I feel like it comes because we're out of debt. We're at a point where that's not something I that feel we like have we to have to sacrifice. Yes, I know. And, but when we did have to sacrifice, we did. Yeah. Right? And so we have these big lofty goals next year, two big lofty goals next year. And I think that like I think that, we'll hit. I think we'll be able to hit both of them, but we've got to definitely stay focused. We got to stay focused. And I, there may be other stuff I'm willing to yeah. give up. That, that's the honest truth. What's easy for what's easier for me to give up than for someone else is dining out. To be honest with you, that's one thing that I just don't care as much about. I could go out to eat two, three times a month. I do not care. Yeah. That is not a desire. It's amazing. It's amazing at how much money people actually spend dining out. Oh God, that's that's a whole episode in and yeah. of itself. And that's not that's just. I mean, I like to dine out once in a while because I think it removes the distractions. We're not worried about you know meal planning and cooking and cleanup. And it just takes, you know, it removes the distractions and allows us to just focus kind of on one another and conversation and other things. So, so that's why I think I enjoy dining out sometimes. Yeah, and I, I like it for those reasons, but not enough if I'm trying right. to. Like, I definitely I could. Care. I definitely could push that aside. I, I just don't even. I'm care. okay eating at home because we can eat whatever we want at home. Yeah, I mean it's social, and I think for me, I would just do it with friends or something like that. Anywho, what I was calculating over here is what it takes to get to a million dollars. So run the, run the numbers. I just need to run the numbers. And they're not terrible, but you know, people have to think about this. You save um a thousand dollars a month. That's twelve thousand dollars a year for 20 years. You only put in two hundred and forty thousand dollars in those 20 years. Two hundred and forty thousand yes. doesn't seem like in the bigger picture of life, it's not that great. Twelve thousand per year, when the national average for household income is about seventy, and a lot of people are are greater than that. You can do you can do it on a seventy thousand dollar income. You can do it. It will require some sacrifice, but this yeah. is twenty years. If you have twenty years at twelve percent interest on you know return on your money, that's a million dollars. If you have more time, awesome. And, you know, so that's basically a person who's 45 who wants to retire at 65 and needs a million dollars. So I think the thing right there that you said, if you're 45 and you haven't started, you still have time. Yes. You still can do it. Yep. And I look, I'm all about be encouraged, you know, but take action. Yeah. And if you're 45 and you're just getting to this, just know that in five years you can increase your savings. So. Mm Start making preparation because you can do a catch up, which is a big deal. And it's it's less money if you start earlier. The point yes. the point is if you start at thirty, you have fifteen more years than the person who starts at forty five. So that's that's the other the point right. of that. But I have also worked with people. I'm not a financial advisor, 
But I have worked with people to understand what their needs were. And I have had people that I've worked with and their lifestyle and what it is that they require was about 600,000. It wasn't a million. It was, it was 600,000 and, and their time horizon was about 10, 15 years and they could get there. And so, you know, that's, again, a, that's an important assessment is to, it is. to think about where you're at and where you want to be because yeah. everybody doesn't want the same things. Mm. You know, like we said, we want a family home, but everybody doesn't want that. Most people, mm-hmm. when they start to get to a point where they're thinking about retirement, which we're not there yet. But we're thinking about it because that's what we talk about. Yeah. We decided, you know, we don't want – we actually thought about getting a small home. We Remember, did for a hot second. Well, well I, think, I think it was a hot second because we were like, you know what? When the kids are out of the house, you know, we should downsize. And we went and looked at a house. And we walked out like, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I we, think we both we both were in harmony walking out. I'm not doing that. No, we did not. That did not resonate. I was uh, like, this feels. Uh, this is claustro- too. Yeah, it, it I, felt couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I, I think the other thing is that you know, leave room for some adjustment because the the truth is is that there may come a time when we actually do want that. But I I'm gonna guess that. While our family is still growing because our kids have not had children yet, they have not gotten married yet. Like that, I want I want them to come to grandma, grandpa house at that time and be comfortable. And And while we're still up and mobile and doing all the things, I could see have your space for many years, for some decades still, that we would want something bigger. And I think that that's important to know about yourself. Plus, the other thing is, you already heard this is. I'm not willing to give up vacations. <laughs> so I need some money for that. And so I know myself and, and I want that because I'm like, don't be in my space. So a million dollars. Go, go over there to your space and the, the room and bathroom. Don't be over here. A million dollars for the youngs is not enough. Okay. That's, let's be clear. We, yeah, no. we need several. Okay. Yeah. Because, because we still have desires that we want and that is, it's important to us. And there's nothing wrong with I think there's just nothing I think, wrong I with I think that. it's perfectly fine. Yes. Because if you take a hundred people and say, What is your plan? What is your goal? What 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 do you desire, you know, lifestyle wise in the future? Let's talk about your life now. You can get a hundred different mm-hmm. responses. Yeah. And none of them are they're not right or wrong. They're just different. They're just different. And it's okay for our response and answer to be different than somebody else's. Mm-hmm. The point is that we want you to think about your answer. Mm -hmm. And in thinking about your answer, it requires you to do some things. Mm -hmm. And that's where people, that's where I say people miss it, is they don't do the things. Like, you know, people at work, they will have a company match, but they're not putting in at least the minimum to get the match. Mm -hmm. That's free money you're missing out on. Let's let's not miss out on no free money. Right, so... Put the company match in. Start there. Yeah. And then when you get a, a pay raise, maybe you increase it some. Don't enhance your lifestyle right now. Increase your savings so that you can be benefiting in that way. The other thing that I'm going to add, because I don't want this to seem like such a reach or a climb for people to save money. We are in money is everywhere. And so be it from your main gig or your business or a side side hustle, like money is everywhere and our access and ability to get money is increasing and expanding. It surprised me that I saw this week that Selena Gomez is now a billionaire. Selena Gomez, like. I was like, what did she, she did, she did some, some movies, but I guess, I know she's big, but. But it's crazy because she's a billionaire and Beyonce still has not reached that status yet. Come on, that can't be right. She is, no, Beyonce is like at $860 million. Now, Jay-Z is a billionaire. What, what did Selena Gomez do? Right, so she, so this is the thing. Billionaires are being formed at a much faster rate and younger like money I mean, you is got me out over there. here. You got me over here thinking like, what, what did she? 
She's a businesswoman. This woman. Yes. So her. I'm going to do some research offline. I want to know now. (laughs) We were all excited. We were all excited when year. Now, this was years ago when Oprah became a billionaire. We were like, ah, this is amazing. I mean, I don't know if I was excited because, you know, I didn't feel the impact of it. (laughs) I was excited (laughs) because she was a black woman. Okay. I was like, she was was the one. Yay, Oprah. (laughs) You know, for many years, for like 30 years. She was, she was like the, the poster child. One person yeah. that people looked up to as, wow, this is success. And then that person became a billionaire. And what that said to many folks is, I can do it too. But she was in her 50s when it had occurred. And so these younger people, like what you call it, um, Kylie, Kylie Jen, isn't you said, it? You said what you call it. What's her name? <laughs> Is that her name? Yes. yes. <laughs> what you call it. <laughs> but when we're noticing these young people, well, you it's not. to show your age. What you call it, Nim? It, you know what, what you call it, Nim? Is this, is this what we going to do today? <laughs> This is what happens when we wake up in the morning and record. I'm just wondering. What you call it in them? You know what? <laughs> you gonna saying. always be older than me, okay? Yep. You yep. gonna always be older than me. That's what I just embrace it. You know, I'm, that's why I'm just wearing the gray hair. Yeah, like, and I'm gonna never wear gray hair. You know that the running joke <laughs> is if I go before you, right? You better it, get my hair dyed. You better make sure my hair is dyed. <laughs> if you gonna show me up in here. You I'm laid out. You better you, have my I hair. I told back. my friend. I told my friend. I said, "Girl, you better make sure my hair is right, okay? Because I'm not gonna be looking crazy. People coming and looking at me, and I'm looking crazy. Like when I'm laid out, you better get me right, okay? I don't want to see look, no you know gray. What? I got I'll be I'll be 90 years old. I don't want to see no gray. Listen, my mama still grays her hair. I mean, she still colors her hair. Look, look, babe. You you look great. You look I see beautiful. these women who look awesome with great with gray hair. But that that ain't going to be me. Right. That's their story. Go on, girl. Do your thing. But not me. Anywho. You know what? You know what? Maybe I'm going to do some brushing. Ooh. You done put it. See, but you put oh. it out there. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> they going to be like, oh, oh, Chris. I'm going to come back. I'm you gonna come did back. it. I'm going to come back in two weeks with a jet black. We had a friend who did that. And it looked. And I saw him. I was like, bro. Crazy. I was like, bro, if you don't go wash that out. It, he went from some speckled gray to jet black. jet black. And I was like, This jet black. You look crazy. You look crazy. Anyway. Well, I'm going to roll with it because I don't care. What was we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about billionaires. Yes. And you said, What you going to call it? And then, or yeah. I said, What you going to call what it? What you going to call it in them? But money is out there. And so I don't want us to get so focused on what our budget can or cannot produce today. Maybe where we need to expand our mind is that our income, our resources. What do you need to do to expand your income? Can get bigger so that $1,000 or $500 a month is not a big deal to put towards your future. You know, you know, I remember, I remember when I was in college and I literally, I went to school full time when I was a college student and I worked full time. As a college student. So I was a FedEx driver and I would get up. I had to be to work at 515 in the morning. And I would go and I would work from 515 to about noon, one o'clock. And then I would usually take classes after I got off work. So I was literally, I was taking a full course load and I was working full time as a FedEx driver because I was paying my own way through school. Did I want to do it? No. But I had made a decision that there was nothing that was going to keep me from completing my degree, even if it meant I had to go to school full time and work full time. So in that season of life, I had to sacrifice some things. Mm -hmm. I had to say, you know what, this is important. I got to be up early to be to work. I got to make sure I have enough energy to work and go to class. Then I have to leave space to do homework and do things like that. So I had to really make some shifts and adjustments in my life at that time. And I I bring that up because you can do what you want to do. And people spend money on what they want to spend money on. Mm -hmm. So you can make some decisions to say, okay, I'm drawing a line in the sand right now. This is my goal. I, I made the plan. 
I know what the numbers look like. This is my goal. So now let me figure out how I'm going to get there. If this is your income, how can I increase that? Can I get a different position? Can I go for a promotion? Can I get a side hustle? You know, our daughter who has a, a corporate job, she makes a good income. She went and got her a little side hustle because she wanted to go and take some trips and travel and do some other things. And she said, OK, there's a gap that I need to fill. I didn't want to go on. She didn't want to go on her savings to fund these trips. So she said, let me get a little side hustle, a side part time job working a couple extra days or hours. And she was able to fund some of those things. And I'm not saying do this stuff forever. Right. It might be just a season because I couldn't go to school and be a full time student and then not. Uh, I, mean, I couldn't do that forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. What 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 is the the way Americans reach their retirement? How are they reaching those goals that you would say? How are they reaching them? You know what? I, I think that people need to put stuff on autopilot. Mm. That, that's how you reach the goal. Yes. You 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 Don't think set it up it. and you forget it. All the things you're talking about to make sure that people are actually um, getting to where they need to be, you set it up and you forget it. One of the biggest things that we have done is not touch our retirement funds. Yes. Not touch. Don't touch it. Don't pull it out. No loans. No hardship withdrawals. None of that. Um, we just haven't touched it. When we leave a job, you roll it over into the new account, all of that. We have made sure that that money has stayed. I and think it's easy. It's easy sometimes to not do that because I had a job that I worked at and they just sent me a buyout for a pension that I had acquired. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you can take a lump sum disbursement. Yep. You can take the taxes. I could have said, oh, you know, I wasn't counting on this money. Let me go ahead on and blow it or spend it on something mm -hmm. because it's easy to do. But yeah. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, let me go ahead and do a direct rollover into an IRA and that money will go right there. And the reason why it's important not to spend it, like you said, is because you have taxes, a penalty. You have a penalty, penalty because you're not 59 and a half. Right. And then you also had taxes. If that money, you would have seen 60% of it, not a hundred percent of it. It's not worth it. I would no. rather let it, let it grow. And I think that I rather let it grow and pay taxes on it later. One of the things that gets in the way of people actually building up a retirement savings or a nest egg that they can be proud of is that they don't plan. They touch the money that they are trying to save and they're not willing to do some of the things that you mentioned. They're not willing to go get that second job. They're not willing, you know, to uh, relook re at the budget or set something aside, you know, or to pause something or what have you. They're not willing. And so I would, I'm, I'm just going to kind of jump into how to make it worth it. I think the biggest thing is that you have to be willing to do something. Yes. And I, I think that if people can sit and think about what is it that they're willing to do, these billionaires are being made because they were willing to take a step out and to figure out what kind of business would be successful and it's taken off. These millionaires are being formed because people were willing to put money aside mm -hmm. for their retirement. And I would just encourage you to think about what are you willing to do in order to change your financial situation forever? For the better. How about you? What do you think is going to make it worth it? I would say to make it worth it, one, be encouraged because there is time and you can make the result that you're looking for. Um, stay, stay the course, you know, and when you have that plan, work the plan because progress occurs over time. You know, it's not instant. You know, this isn't Instacart where we order it and it shows up. <laughs> it's like be encouraged, stay the course and work the plan because progress will occur over time. And when you see that first bit of progress, it's like going to the gym. When you go to the gym and you stick with it, it, it doesn't happen after the first day, the first week, two weeks. It might take a couple months before you start to see some progress. But then when you see that progress, what happens? You Oh, OK, this is working. Then you do something else. You know, maybe you adjust your diet a little bit more. Maybe you do a little bit, you stay a little longer at the gym and you start making different decisions because you see progress. And as you see that progress occur over time, you'd be like, okay, wait a minute, this is, this is working. I can do this. Yeah. 
and then that's when you get the outcomes that you're looking for. I think that's that's a good thing to think about too is go track your progress. You know what I mean? Go see how far you've come yep. so far and know like if I did that, I can do this too. I think that that's what's helpful. A lot of times we just stay stuck because we're not aware of how far we've come. And so mm-hmm. I think that's a really great point to end off on. So thanks for that. Love it. Yeah. So we're so glad you tuned in. This was really good. Um, and uh, I won't call somebody what you call it next time. <laughs> what you call it in them. <laughs> What's the name? <laughs> Anywho, until next time. We're out. Thank you for spending some of your time with us today. We appreciate all of your support. So be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. You can find us on Instagram at For Better and Worth. And sign up to receive our free guide, The Seven Reasons Your Money Relationship Isn't Working With Your Partner, on ForBetterAndWorth.com. Until next time, we're out of here.